Welcome back to SWAT and C-Team Live. I'm Sammy Hansen, and we're going to run our Percy and Percival, um, I don't know, skit, whatever you call it, once more for you guys. So I'll let Percy and Percival take it away. Thanks for joining us. Percy, why does she call that a skit? This is pure genius is what it is. It ain't a skit. Oh, we're here to take everybody to school because they haven't had enough of it with uh, being at home and stuff like that. Quarantine. Quarantine. And y'all y'all heard about the quarantine. Um, we heard great comments and reviews saying that you've all understood it better than ever before. And so we thought we'd, we'd bring another word your way. And it's a big one. So be prepared. It's another five syllable word. Five syllables. The word is testimony. Another five syllable word, and That's it's right. a tough one. And this one's going to really challenge our parsing abilities, Percy, because we're going to have to really get deep into this one to make it work and to make it understandable for everybody. That's right, Percival. And to do that, we need a red pen. From, Take it. From the donut. And mark. that's not you and grab a red pen. Oh, I got a brown pen. All right, there we go. All right, starting us off. Testimony, it must be clearly defined for our message tonight. I'm going to start us off with a four letter word that is right in the beginning. It says test. One thing you must know about testimonies is that it's kind of like taking a test because it requires preparation. That's a five syllable word for you. Preparation. Just like you're studying for tests and just like you got to get ready to know what's going on, if you're going to share your testimony, you have got to be prepared. Because if you're not prepared, you're not even, you're not even going to know what your testimony is. So that's the first thing we need to know about a testimony. But preparation doesn't necessarily mean preparation H. That's, that's another parsing. That's right. But the next piece of the word testimony that is very important is the word testy. Now, testy is what happens if you don't have a testimony. Someday you are going to die and you are going to stand before God and you're going to have to explain to him why he should let you into heaven. And if you don't have a testimony, things are going to get testy. That's and right. You Linus. are going to have a hard time explaining that to God. That is so true. And, and Cooter, I think you got a great, uh, great word going on here. But in order to pronounce it right, just make sure to throw that accent on right there. Testy. The next and probably most normal word of this entire thing here is money. Money. All y'all know what money is because you need it to buy things like a donut mug. And here's the thing, what your heart loves is often, it is often basically told and, and shown by what you spend your money on. Where you spend your money will show the love and the desire of your heart. And so if you have a testimony, if your testimony says you believe in Jesus, then how you spend and how you use your money will show that your testimony is all about Jesus. Jesus must love Chick-fil-A then, Percy, because you are always spending your money at Chick-fil-A. Oh, I cannot lie. That is very true. Yes, sir. The next word that is very important in here is the word timoni. 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 Now, timoni is the same Latin root word that's in the word antimony. Some people call it antimony, but it's antimony. Now, antimony is oftentimes mistaken for lead. Lead and antimony look alike, they feel alike, and they're both heavy. You need to get the lead out and get you a testimony. You cannot be dragging your feet. Wait until you're old. It starts when you're a young'un. You young'uns need to be getting lead out and get your testimony on fire. That's right, Billy Bob. I love that. Testimony and antimony. They sound very similar, which means you know it's important. That's it. All right, now smack dab right in the middle of this incredible large word is a name. And that name 
is Tim. Now, some of you C Team peoples out there uh, may know a Tim, and uh, and that is exactly why there's the word Tim in here. If you know Tim Spranger, you will know that Tim Spranger has a testimony. A fine, a testimony. fine testimony. He was going all over the place, weaving around, and Jesus has made him a straight path and a testimony to share to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And not only is there a Tim Springer in this word right here, but there is a Timothy, a Timothy in the, the Bible. In the scripture. That's right. And uh, Paul, a very famous man with a testimony in the Bible, he, he uh, discipled this guy. He taught him everything he knew. And Timothy, he's got a really good testimony. And that's because he learned about God's word. Amen. Amen. Mother. All right. Sorry about those technical difficulties, everybody. Thanks for finding the new live video. And uh, thanks for standing by. But uh, whew, I tell you what, the suspense was killing me. I really wanted to know what was next. You were about to tell me that there's even backwards words in here. Percy, I was saying that the English language is complicated mm. and that sometimes there are words that are backwards and you got to look for them, but they make a word come alive. And right here is the word nom, N-O-M. And that took me back to my childhood, back in my first year of kindergarten. Mm. And my school bus driver got drafted, and he had to go to Nam to fight in the war. And we was all worried that he was going to die and not come back from Nam. But you know what, Percy? Uh, tell me about it. He had a testimony. Oh, praise the Jesus. The bus driver knew that if he died, he would go to heaven. And he told us not to worry because he had a testimony. You know what's really cool about that, Percy? Mm, he me. was a bus driver, and he had a testimony. Okay. You know who else is a bus driver? Oh, the good old Tracy Meyer. Miss Tracy. And the good old Dennis Sankyle. And you know what they have? They're not old, by the way. They're good, but they're good old. They're, they're old. old. They're old. Oh, they are old. They are. Right. And I'll tell you why they're old. Why? Not only does Miss Tracy have a testimony, all right, but if they had sent her to Nam. She probably would have talked the Viet Cong to death, and the war would have ended sooner. Wow. Well, of course it would have, Percy. Anyway, Percy, that is the word testimony. And that's right. And just how, you know, every time you end a word, you got to look at the last two letters in order to really end the word well. And that is NY. And everybody knows what NY stands for. New York. And you've all heard that famous lyric out there that says, New York to L.A. Well, we are called to tell our testimony from New York to L.A. And I usually get my east and my west and my north and south wrong. All I know is that, that New York is to the right of Wisconsin and L.A. is to the left. It doesn't matter if you go north, south, east or west. As long as you're going right or left, when you're telling your tel testimony, look to your right. Look to your left. That's how you tell your testimony. And actually, Percy, these are both on the left coast, to be clear. <laughs> anyway, that's all, all right. we got. All right. I all understand. Be good now. I understand. Well, thank you for joining me. You have a good evening. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna get serious here. I think. <laughs> we're back again um if you guys uh did not realize we are going to be talking about uh testimonies today believe it or not and if you brought your bibles if you got them around uh you can turn to acts chapter two i'm going to be uh turning there as well um but last week we read acts chapter a portion of acts chapter one where jesus had ascended and we talked about the disciples and how they faithfully obeyed Jesus and his final commands 
and um, and we talked about the coming of the Holy Spirit, and we reach Acts t- chapter two, and the disciples have they finally received the Holy Spirit, and so this time of waiting is over, and we see this incredible uh, passage where there's a big wind, and it's almost like tongues of fire descended on the disciples, and soon the disciples are speaking. And every tribe that's listening, every language that's listening is hearing them in their own language. It's a miraculous moment. And so what are the disciples going to do with this miraculous moment and opportunity? And that's what we're going to read today in Acts chapter 2. I'm going to read a story, uh, and it starts in verse 22. And I'm going to go down to all the way to the... uh, to verse 41. So it's going to be a little bit of a a time for me to read. Uh, So just listen in. But this is what Peter, one of the disciples, uh, this is what he does with this time where every single person around can understand what he's saying. He says, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosening the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I might not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let the Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This, uh, this Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Therefore, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized. And were added that day about 3,000 souls. So it's a bit of a long story that I just read, but what does Peter do with this great opportunity? Well, he shares a testimony, specifically his own testimony. And I would like to talk to you about what a testimony is and uh, and what Peter has included in this testimony. First, we see that Peter included the story of Jesus. That is the first and most important thing about a testimony. It doesn't start with you or myself or anyone. It starts with Jesus. And Peter, he says, uh, through quite a, a long and extended explanation, an extended explanation, that Jesus is God's son, that he died on the cross for sinful people, that he rose again, meaning he He conquered death, meaning the penalty was paid uh, completely and fully, just like we talked about last week. And because he is raised from the dead and sitting at the right hand of God today, we all 
can uh, be saved and receive the forgiveness of sins. He first shared the story of Jesus. That is so important about a testimony. That is what a testimony is all about, being a witness to the work that Jesus has done, uh, both on the cross and in our own lives. So again, step one, what is what does a testimony involve? It involves the story of Jesus. He then moves on later on uh, in this passage, and he gives the second part of a testimony. And that is uh, Peter's own story, or your own story, or my own story. That is the next part. He shares, he says, we all bear witness of the events and of these things and of this Jesus whom you crucified. And because he talked about Jesus' life, he now makes it personal about his own life. He says, yep, Jesus, he died, he rose again, but you know what? I believe it. I believe it, and I have accepted it, and I'm going to tell people that it is completely affecting my life because I believe in Jesus. So that's the second thing in the testimony. He first says, this is Jesus' story. Then he says, this is my story. So there's one final thing in here that he shares about uh, the testimony. And we see that in some of the final words that Peter shares. He says, this can be your story. So first, this is Jesus' story. This is my story. And then he says, this can be your story. This is where he opens it up to everybody listening, every tribe, every language, every nation, everyone in the room or out of the room if he was outside. And they all hear this like as if Peter is saying, I am talking to you specifically. And the way that he opens it up to everybody is he says, because Jesus died for all, he says, everybody can receive the gift of salvation. He says, you who were far off, meaning you who in the past may not have had a chance without Jesus, who before it was just the Jewish nation, a select nation chosen by God. Now, Jesus has opened the door for the entire world. So it meant that way, like literally between Jews and Gentiles. But he also was talking about the type of people that we are. Jesus died for a sinful group of people, a sinful world. So no matter how far off you are because of the, the sins, because of the wrong things you've done, or because of the regrets you have or the mistakes you've made, Peter says you can receive complete and perfect forgiveness and be a part of God's family. Be children of God is how uh, Peter explains it. And so after he shares, this is Jesus' story, this is my story, and this can be your story, we see that the audience, it says it was cut to the heart. That means that they were really listening and that they really thought about what Peter was saying which is really cool. It means that Peter shared this in a way that mattered to the people he was talking to. He made it to where he wasn't pushing the people he was talking to away. He was drawing them in. And they ask, what do we do? And that's where he says, repent and be baptized. He says, receive that free gift of salvation. And I think that this is pretty, pretty amazing and, and truly inspiring that Peter was able to do this. Because uh, when you look back to, to just the, the, the previous chapters in the Gospels about the crucifixion, uh, Peter was the man that denied Jesus three times. Peter had three opportunities to share his testimony to people who needed to be saved. And what did he do? He said, I don't know that man. Get away from me. He, he basically... He made himself as far away as, from Jesus as he could. And here we now see in Acts, Jesus has given him an opportunity, a second chance to truly align himself and to be an ally with Jesus and say, yes, this is Jesus' story. This is my story. And they are close now. I was once far off, but now I have been brought close. And that is really encouraging for you and me today. Because uh, many of us have a testimony that are, are listening in today. Many of you guys have received that free gift of forgiveness and salvation, and you have a testimony. But 
with how life goes and the busyness of life and the uh, just the uh, surround the people who surround us uh, in our schools and our extracurricular activities and all those things. Just a few months ago, when we were totally in the world and around all sorts of people, we had the opportunity to share a testimony. But many of us have not have not done that. Just like Peter had not done that. But now we have been given a new opportunity, a second chance, a new attempt to sh share our testimonies during this time of quarantine. Now you might be asking like, how can I do that? Peter was literally in front of 3000 people. I'm in front of my cat or my dog or something. Um, but I think that we can get creative about how to share our testimony. But before we can do that, just like Percy and Percival shared, with the first word test, you have got to prepare your own testimony. And so for all of you who are listening in today, I encourage you all to sit down and to really think about the story of Jesus, to think about your own story, and to think about how you can make this other people's story. Figure out what words can you say? How can you, how can you create a testimony that includes those three things that you can share to your friends or to your family or to your neighbors, uh, things like that. You first must prepare. After that, then we can get creative. Uh, thankfully, we have about 18 million social media uh, sources out there, and you can totally use that as an opportunity uh, to share your testimony. This might be more prominent for high school students, but for, for really anybody who has any kind of a presence on social media, I encourage you to use that for good. Go out and literally share your testimony. If you've got a Snapchat, share your testimony on there through some key words or through some key items in your house or through some, you know, a quick 30 second, whatever, 10 second video. Um, if you've got a Facebook or an Instagram, find a creative way to share your testimony and share it with your friends, even those who you might be afraid to share it with. Now, maybe if you don't have social media, I, you're not out of the loop. There are still creative ways to do this. Um, maybe there's family members that you can share this to over email or writing a letter or texting or calling. Maybe there are neighbors that you could share this to by literally creating an artistic or creative way on the sidewalk with chalk on how to share your testimony. Um, maybe there are things that you can do with preparing meals or helping you know, bring errands to people that include the story of Jesus. There are many interesting and unique ways that we can all share our testimonies today. And I encourage everybody watching to at least have the preparation done to share your testimony and then to go out and share it. Now, there might be a final group here that's thinking, ah, I'm looking back at my life and I truly, I truly don't know if I have a testimony. Or you might be thinking, I don't know, is, is, is my testimony really that powerful that it's going to cut the hearts, or that's going to change lives? And if you're asking that question, I encourage you to talk to your friends who believe in God, your family who might believe in God, or your C team or SWAT leaders who believe in God. And let's talk through your own personal story and see, you know what, maybe today's the day or tomorrow's the day where you do need to receive that free gift of salvation. Or if you already have, then maybe today is the day where you realize the power of combining your story and Jesus' story together and sharing it with others. And so this week, that's our challenge. Go out and share your own story. Talk about it in your small groups, in your Bible studies. And I think that we can make a really incredible impact in our community, literally saving lives. Peter, by taking advantage of his opportunity, saved 3,000 lives. I'm not saying that you and I might save 3,000, but you never know who could hear your story and be cut to the heart and repent and believe in Jesus. So let's pray. And then the C-teamers, you guys got small groups. Uh, SWAT will have it um, afterwards. Um, if there's any like families that are have C-team and SWAT students that, uh, um, that are trying to share devices or things like that, um, it's totally okay to hop on late or let us know. Um, yeah, hop on late to the SWAT one or let us know and maybe we can change the time. Um, but we'll we'll try and be flexible with how uh, things go since we've gone a little bit later today. So appreciate you all tuning in and I uh, hope the preparation and sharing of your testimonies 
is a blessing to both your life and the people you share it to. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this passage that we could read. Thank you for Peter's boldness that you redeemed him by giving him a second chance to uh, share how your story and his story combine into a beautiful picture of salvation. We thank you that we can receive your forgiveness today. We thank you that we can share about this today. And we pray that we would be bold and do that. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, I will see you uh, next week with hopefully less uh, technical difficulties. But hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Bye.